sit down again. Good afternoon, uh, fellow Singaporeans. Welcome. Uncle Patrick, sorry, yes. uh, you need a chair? I think I can sit down. Dangerous, I cannot lie. It's all right, I can sit down. Don't worry. I did it last on August 9th. I shall do it again because it's closer. Closer to the people. Kakina. Ah, <laughs> so, thank you for coming on this very hot afternoon. Thank you for coming. I, I just got it here in time. So, someone said long ago, a single journey starts, a single journey of 1,000 miles starts with a single step. So, all of us have made a single step for today and for all the previous uh, protest uh, gatherings. All the single steps to come here to be together and that is something which is highly encouraging. So thank you all once again for coming. So today we are talking about CPF, HDB and all the rest of it. I remember when I was in Tasmania uh, some years ago, I met a shop lady who was selling souvenirs. I asked her how long have you stayed in your house? She said, I've stayed in my house for my whole life. Then what about your mother? Oh, she was born in the house too. And what about your grandmother? Oh, she also lived in that same house. So three generations of this Tasmanian live in that one house. They did not have to sell the house. They don't, do not have to lease back. They not, do not have to rent it out. So that is their home, their nest, their haven, a place where they can go back and find peace and quiet. So same with Singaporeans. Who would want to sell the flat or lease back the flat or rent the flat to the FTs? Because 85% of Singaporeans already got the HDB flat. So it's going to rent from us. So it's likely to be renting to an FT who got our job in the first place. So that is very hard to stomach, okay? So that is not a viable proposition. So again, the government is not listening. Maybe that afternoon because of the National Day Parade, there are too many planes, F-16s flying around, too many, 21 guns are still booming away. So, they couldn't hear. But today there's no National Day Parade. It is August 23rd. So if we rap our song loudly, very loudly, I think they might hear. But they might again pretend not to hear. Singaporeans, I think they have this Asian value, this cultural value, this Chinese value of wanting to bequeath something to their children. Okay, so they die, die, will not lease back. They want to be quick because if they don't be quick it to their children, how are they going to afford a half a million dollar flat in the years to come? Right now it's already 300 to 400,000. So our Asian values, our Chinese value is very important to us. So that is why nobody buys. Nobody buys despite all the hype from Mr. Lee Sien Lo. But they don't listen. And the problem is they don't listen. And you know, 12 years ago, where is my paper? Paper? Oh, on your pocket. On your pocket. 12 years ago, I wrote a letter to the Straits Times. Okay, your money out. Okay, never mind. Money can always be found again. This is the article which I wrote to the Straits Times. It's uh, right across the uh, forum page. It says changes to CPF won't solve problem. Won't solve problems. And it's dated uh, September. No, it's dated Saturday, April 6, 2002. What prompted this letter was Mr. Lee Boon Heng. Lim Boon Heng. He said, You guys all want to buy HDB. The moment you graduate, you want to buy HDB. Forget about it because the HDB is going to cost you a bomb and you will eat into your CPF funds. So maybe he said you should sacrifice and slaughter this sacred cow of owning a CPF flag. And yet they contradict themselves by saying, this is our best home. 
we must have a best home so that we can all fight and die for the best home. But yet, we have a minister, no, we have a minister and we have someone in the trade union movement, the section of NTUC, who said, don't. Because even at that point in time, in 2002, he knows that there ain't going to be enough in our retirement fund to, for our retirement. So, 20 years later, he has retired because he's got an iron rice bowl. His right, Iron Rice Bowl now is as a chairman of Tomasic Holdings. As a chairman of Tomasic Holdings, we don't even know how much he receives for his remuneration. We don't know because it's all undercover. Same with the director's fees for GIC. Same with the director's fees for Tomasic Holdings. We don't know. And they were not published. I went and Googled all over for the last two days and I can't find any data on how much Lim Boon Heng is getting as a director, as the chairman of the Masik Holdings. Yes. Nothing came up. Nothing came up. Ah. Anyway, not only him, but the Iron Rice Bowl people includes people like Dana Balan, people like uh, Lee Boon Yang, who's now SPH chairman, and it also includes so many others who upon retirement from their political appointments, they are appointed to these very high positions as chairman of very huge organizations from SPH to Tamasic Holdings to Singbridge. Singbridge, Wong Kang Singh, since he was given the marching orders, was appointed the chairman of Singbridge. So, so what they are so clever at creating the rice bowls, the iron rice bowls, even after pocketing so much salaries in the 10 to 15 years, they still, after retirement, you know, give themselves these plum plum jobs. Very plum jobs. The figures of which we won't even want to know because it's probably very indecent. Obscene. 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 So, so now we are being asked to uh, use our HDD flat to lease back, to rent out. So, how, where, do we, where do we go from here? I think we should go back to fundamental. We should go back to fundamental. The fundamental is the CPF covenant, when it was first instituted, is for retirement. But over the years, because they couldn't sell the HDD flats, they channeled our precious CPR money into buying flats. Or at the beginning, it was fine. But as the years and the decades went by, the price of land went up, the price of HDD went up. So that takes a huge bite. We all know about this. That takes a huge bite from our CPR. And another thing that was introduced is the MediSafe account. The MediSafe account right now is pretty much about 5 to 6% of our CPF each month. I think we should just abolish the MediSafe, abolish it, let the MediSafe contribution go back to your special account, your retirement account, and then you don't have to wayang, wayang, wayang with MediShield Live, with selling your flat or lease back your flat. You don't have to wayang, just give channel the 5 to 6% back to our retirement account and bravely, bravely stand up, stand up for Singapore. Stand up for Singapore means spending 3% more, okay, from whatever budget surpluses every year. Spend at 3% and increase our national health spending from 3% to about 6%. And that will take care of everybody, from the rich to the poor. They will be entitled. They will be entitled to free, universal health care, hospitalization, C class maybe, B two maybe. Those who want to have better, they can use whatever amount in their accounts to go and buy the integrated plans. So that's.
what I think is viable, what I think is doing, is, is doable. As for the leading of the minimum sum scheme, I agree with the organizers that the minimum sum scheme should be a voluntary thing. The minimum sum thing is up to the risk appetite of all of us. If our risk appetite is high, we can take it out. We can even put it in the Hong Kong MPH, MPF. I just read an article by one of our bloggers, Mr. Chris K, who took the trouble to analyze the difference between CPF and MPF in Hong Kong. I think I get educated when I read all this stuff on the internet. I get educated every day, every night. And the stuff that churns out, that's being churned out by the social media is fantastic. It's really fantastic. It turns the world around now. So that's why Mr. Lee Sen Long in today's papers is very worried. That's why Go Chok Tong is very worried. 20 years ago when Catherine Lim wrote an article about the people and the PAP and the, and the, and the Singapore people, the great effective divide, persuading him, asking him to be, to be more benign, to be gentle, to be less bullying, to be less hectoring. But unfortunately, he turned a deaf ear to Catherine Lim, our Singapore author's uh, plea. And instead he said, who are you? You are just an author. Why you want to cut your politics is not your business. Go back to your book writing. And he created a new term, OB Marcus. OB markers means out of bound markers. You cannot go near this OB markers. But 20 years later, Catherine Lim wrote another open letter to Lee Sin Lung on the same subject that the divide between the Singapore Singaporeans and the government is getting wider and wider and wider. And this is evidenced by Hong Lim, by the social media. So this is one problem which it's not a problem, in our sense, the word problem, but they perceive it as a problem. And this problem will not go away. I think Lee Sen Lung is completely out when he says that the internet is not for our age. You cannot arrest the internet. It is here to stay. So, better listen while there is still time. Okay, the next time, when they do not listen, listen, we will sing this song. No more next time. No more next yes, time. Okay. Shall we do it together? Mama tell me to buy me. To the front row, the dark. Oh, the dark. I don't want you. You don't want me. You don't want me. 你要快快来处理，人民才会相信你。如果你不快快来处理，二零一六就不随你，二零一五就不随你，二零一六就没有你，没有你，没有你。公有公理，婆有婆理 ，H D P 不可以卖的。OK， 不可以 l e a s back。这次叫我们卖是没有道理的。我们的 CPI 没有了，就是等于是没有米，没有米，就怎么样呢？我不知道。所以二零一五、二零一六，你要快快。现在处理了，听没有？他听没有？听不清楚。所以到现在我们还要唱。小薇，妈妈。Shall we? One, two, three. I say one line, you say one line. Boleka. Bole. Okay. Mama tell me to buy me. Mama tell me to buy me. Go down the road, see the sea. See the sea. Our 
百姓才会相信你。如果你不快快来处理，二零一六就没有你。没有。没有米，没有米就我必啊，我必喽。OK， 谢谢各位的支持。